Okay, thank you for everyone for joining us. Uh, so here we go. My name is, is Ben Bunell. You may have, have seen my ugly mug uh, and, and the voice on various different products of Motorsport UK. So I've been working at Motorsport UK now for the last year, nearly year and a half. Uh, I'm now the new communications manager and I've been working in PR, social media, bit of marketing for the last seven years. Uh, and originally a Jersey boy through and through and proud to be representing Motorsport UK and the most southern part of the British Isles. And I'm going to introduce you to my other colleagues who will be able to tell a little bit about themselves. So Sarah Tibbetts, first of all. Hello, everybody. Um, I've been, well, I was in the most Sport UK communications team for five years after doing a PR degree. Um, recently moved to the sport promotion team. I've been working with um, the clubs, organising these webinars and um, producing lots of resources. And I'm now moving back to the communication team. <laughs> <laughs> so lots of... Uh, social media and comms uh, experience and experience working with Ben as well. <laughs> it's good. It's good to have you back. There was a few months of there. We didn't speak to each other, but it's great to have you back, Sarah. Uh, and, and Ian Berry also joins us this evening. He's, he said he's going to remain quiet, but we'll, we'll get him to introduce himself and uh, he's going to be helping with some of the questions in a bit. So Ian Berry. Uh, hi, uh, I'm head of sport promotion. I joined Motorsport UK last, end of last February and I've been in the sport business for well, motorsport for about, 30 years uh, a lot of karting used to work for msv as well for nine years as group in a track hire so um yeah it's great to be the most sport uk now that we are pushing forward trying to be the the governing body that we need to be uh to to make the sport great and to help grassroots so yeah it's good and i'm pleased we're doing this a lot of thanks to sarah and ben who've put all this together i have no idea what they're going to say and i'm not a social media expert at all um but i have every faith uh in this leap of faith that we're about to do. So good luck guys, crack on. I mean, that's from, from your boss there, that's positive words. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so I think um, for those uh, who were early on, on who joined the Zoom meeting, um, heard to just give a bit of an introduction. So we are gonna look at social media today. We're hopefully gonna go straight down the middle. We appreciate some of you guys have fairly new to, to the, some people call the dark art of social media, fairly new. And some people may have a bit of experience and maybe doing this anyway, but you may find a few little tips uh, and little hints and tips. So hopefully you find it useful. Uh, and we're going to kick off, well, Sarah's going to kick us off, talk us about Zoom, and she's going to lead us into our social media chat this evening. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Over to you, Sarah. Thanks, Ben. Um, just to get started, I know some of you, I imagine most of you have used Zoom by now in some format, whether it's in a work context of meetings or chatting with friends, but I'm just going to quickly run through the controls so that you can interact with us this evening if you wish to. Um, first of all, we have the chat function here. If you have any questions, if you'd like to contribute some ideas, just pop it in the box. Um, we're all monitoring that. Um, and Ian will try and respond if you have any questions. Um, we also have the raise the hand option there. Um, if everybody would like to raise their hand, we can test that out. We, must, then we may ask a quick straw poll with hands. Look at this is a Mexican wave going on. Yeah, <laughs> we like that. We can see those going up, perfect. Um, and then again, I think as Ben and Ian have just mentioned, um, we also have a Q&A box. So just, you should have these controls at the bottom of your screen. If you just hover over them and click, you can ask us questions and uh, we'll be keeping an eye on that box and we'll try and answer your questions. If we can't, we'll, um, We'll go away and answer them and uh, do our best. That is in your eyesight, ladies and gentlemen. That is actually Ian's daughter. That's not some weird sort of <laughs> thing going on there. <laughs> I seem to have an imposter. Um, and Dave, yes, you can put your hand down now. Right, go. Go, daughter. So there we go. Hopefully that gives you an idea about Zoom and, and so we'll, we'll, we'll bring us on to our, our next slide. I'd like to introduce um, our esteemed Chief Executive, Hugh Chambers. He's just got a quick little welcome video for you and a little explanation video about this webinar series. Hello and welcome. We've introduced this webinar series to offer support and guidance to your club and its members. These are unprecedented times for everyone. And as we're all painfully aware, the changes we are facing are very considerable. The speed of change is striking and it's required all of us to reset our perspectives on a daily basis. We're committed to working with our clubs and supporting you through this difficult time. We're all getting used to working away from our offices 
remotely using video conferencing. And the development of our learning hub is going to transform the way we communicate with all of our community. We hope you find these new resources useful, but please don't hesitate to email us at club.development at motorsportuk.org if you have any queries or suggestions. From all of us at Motorsport UK, thank you for your continued support throughout these uncertain times. Please be safe, take care and be well. Thank you. And thank you, Hugh. Right then, let's get stuck into this. Just going to say, Hugh does look better in that top than I do. So <laughs> <maybe. laughs> just wanted to throw that in there. So there we go. Social media. And let's get, let's get stuck into the overarching thing, which Sarah will begin in a second. So first of all, it's, it's best practice. Okay. So first of all, we're going back to basics, management of your account. Who actually looks after that in your club? Some of you may have a club press officer that looks after it, or some large clubs may have a dedicated role um, as a social media manager, um, or maybe it's your webmaster. Um, your social media accounts will need regular attention to stay active, but it doesn't have to be too time consuming at all with just some careful planning and simple steps. The next key point, um, consistency is key. Once you have established who will run your club accounts, we recommend limiting the number of people who have access. Um, and on that, we have a quick poll for you. So there should be a question popping up on your screen. Just, we're interested, how many people actually have access to your club's social media accounts? Let's have a look. It's like who wants to be a millionaire, ask the audience this. <laughs> it is love it. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> you can see the lines going up and down. Three is looking like the most popular answer, I think. It's pretty close, though. Okay. Yeah, a few more votes coming, last six or so. Two, three, and four. I think three might just win there. That's interesting, though. Um, we'll just end it's gonna that. Be... Come out That's... on top there. That's going to be very applicable, I think, for the next um, couple of bits and pieces we like to run through. So that's interesting to know. Can we share those results? Uh, we can do, yes. There you go. Um, they've come up on screen. So three winning, but two and four are joint behind there. Interesting. Some, perhaps uh, a, few, a few other clubs there have got five or more, which is going to be like to hear your stories for five or more people accessing accounts so i think that's even more than most of what you can do so i'd like to see how that works uh, and if it works well then great we'd like to hear kind of how you, you manage it um but there we go so following on from that theme we've got a little bit of a test for you based around consistency um so i've got two social posts here can anybody spot some of the differences between them I'll give you a few seconds to have a quick look. Obviously, they're different topics, different images. <laughs> We're not looking at that. <laughs> I know someone's going to say one's got a car in them. <laughs> <laughs> so the, uh, the answer here is, of course, the two posts were made by different members of the Motorsport UK team. The post on the left was made by our regular, regular social media contributor, and the other was made by another member of the comms team. So they may seem fairly similar, you know, they're on brand, but there's a few things missing that really set them apart. So post on the right is missing the hashtag our motorsport UK, which is on all of our posts. It's also missing a call to action. And um, there were also subtle differences in the style. Let's go back um, in that the one on the left contains an emoji and it's slightly longer and the way it's set out. It's not very clear the right hand side, and also the, 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 the image, which is quite a nice image, uh, beautiful mini, is a bit crop, cropped off, so it wasn't selected well. Uh, and it's not ni nice and neat and tidy like the one on the left. And the other one on the left gives it a bit more bit of an identity, whereas the one on the left looks actually just like an advert. So you get one of those all the time, those automated ads, it much looks like that. Yeah, so it's definitely worth. Um, I appreciate some of you larger clubs may have multiple people. Um, running your account. If that is the case, we would recommend just writing a basic style guide of just um, 
yeah, just like the hashtags you should be using, cropping images and some other things we're going to cover later on, just so you can ensure that all your posts stay consistent across platforms. Um, and then Ben is now going to speak to us about scheduling tools. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it was saying before when, when we have, uh, we do have a team of those yeah, at times it is just myself and Sarah, uh, but sometimes we have another couple of people who do join us uh, on various events or pick up certain campaigns and there is a bit of cross crossover. So having a scheduling tool is massively, massively important because um, A, it not only helps you with the planning, but also we appreciate you guys, you know, you've got day jobs, other commitments, uh, you, you know, you may not be able to sort of sit there and post something at seven o'clock for an announcement. You may need to do some work in advance, you may be able to have a bit of time in the morning time in the evening and that's where a scheduling tool really uh, is is amazing you can save so much time uh, plan some posts and actually have a nice little theme come across so we actually use um, a product called later which actually we pay for it because we have multiple accounts we have Wales Rally GB we have British Rally Championship British Kart Championship and most for UK as well as a few few others um, but if it's it is free if you've literally just got your one account so here we go here's what it looks like uh, for most what UK Hopefully, it doesn't look too daunting. Um, in the middle, the white with all the, um, the, the purple squares around it, those are posts that have gone out. So this gives you a t an idea of what the content uh, has gone out from most UK point of view. So we can, on this, we can schedule on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Um, so previously, uh, as you can see at the top there, thank you, Sarah. Uh, previously, you can only schedule on Facebook, um, and now you can do it on Twitter. But with this, you can actually put it all on a desktop, not have to worry about using a phone for Instagram. You can put it all on here. Uh, and it's a very, very quick and easy tool. And again, this timeline helps so that if everyone, you can actually have uh, three or four people logging in at one time. You can actually see when things are gonna be posted up. Um, and it's fairly simple, um, fairly simple to use. Um, literally, I don't know what the, I think the next slide. So again, you can probably see the images that are, are stacked up in, in the kind of the, the, the first third here. Um, those images that have been used uh, in previous campaigns, but literally through the upload media tab, you hit that button there uh, and you can either put it through Dropbox Google, uh, or, or Google uh, or SharePoint. But I think the best thing is possible off your, your desktop or your, your, your downloads or your documents. You can put them in there. And then through this, you can do a bit of cropping, a bit of editing. Uh, as you can see there, we can select an image uh, and we literally drag and drop that onto the timeline to the time that you want to place it. And it just helps. You can then leave it and automatically push and schedule this um, out. And again, you can put it, you can do different images for different uh, different platforms because some images, we'll go onto that a bit later, work slightly better on some platforms than others. But again, there, having that resource there to have all of your fingertips. Uh, and if you want to pay, you know, for example, if you, you're a club but also have an event uh, that has its own channels, you can also pay a little bit more, a little supplement, uh, and you can then add those channels in, uh, in as well. Um, I think... Uh, if you're not sure about that, it's it's fairly self-explanatory, but there are tutorials on on later itself and on YouTube. It really does give you a, a good insight. Um, and there's also a lot of analytics. There's all sorts you can do, but this, as very much as a scheduling tool, is vital when it comes to planning and also saves time. Uh, it's saved me on numerous occasions when I've had to juggle. That's for sure. uh, ben, we've had a question from Toby Moody who said, how much is later? Later is free, what you're looking at here. Um, I, from oh, about a month or so ago when I last looked, this is free of charge um, to literally have your, your free accounts. Um, but you can pay. There are different increments. I think most of what UK pay around, I think it's the $400 mark, but we do have about five or six different accounts on there, which we are managing. And we have up to the users as well. But for basically, if you're looking at that, um, it's, not, it's not a huge money when you look at it throughout for the whole year. And it is a year payment rather than a, a monthly payment. Uh, okay. Someone, someone uses Hootsuite. Again, yeah. that's, a, that's a particularly, um, that's, a, that's a good one as well. Um, we use a little bit of that. Um, and there you go. Uh, there's another question from John. Uh, it says, can you preview what the posts will look like on later as, a, as cropping is different across Twitter, Facebook, Instagram? Yeah, absolutely. So when you do drag um, the image from, the, from that first third into your timeline, it will come up and you put your text and you can also resize. So when you do an Instagram, as we're selected on here, uh, it will actually give you the, uh, the dimensions for an Instagram post. So you can center it and get it absolutely right. Because as we mentioned in the previous slide, you don't want to crop half a mini off. You want a nice right in the center, uh, looking good and a nice, a nice timeline uh, across your social accounts. 
And one last one, Matt Endane. Hi, Matt. He says the first tier is about ninety pounds. Yeah, I think it has has changed fairly recently. Um, these things do, um, which when you look at it, ninety pounds is is still not bad when you consider it for across the whole year and having that ability to to schedule. Again, this is not us telling you to do this. This from us is a nice little tip to bring it all together, especially if you've got multiple people or you've got multiple accounts. And you know what? Sometimes you need a bit of pre-planning because I appreciate you guys are not on this. I'm very lucky this job as sorry, it's part of my job. So very much I'm uh, looking at this almost on a daily basis, but if you've only got maybe an hour or so a day or even less than that, this is extremely helpful or something like this. Well, two more questions. Michael Broadbent says, can you set what time you can post, i.e. daily or weekly? And then another one from Kate Neal. Is there a preview for displaying on a mobile? There, on a, the first question is, yeah, you can literally drag. Um, I haven't tested it too far in advance. I think the, the earliest, I've, so the latest I've gone to is a month uh, in a, in, you know, from now. Uh, but you can look by the looks things, you can keep scrolling uh, on, the, on the date just underneath the three social handles. You can see the date and you can keep scrolling that along. So you can literally... You obviously can't go retrospectively. It's got to be posted. So, for example, the time now is 20 past eight. You've got to go from 2021. You can't go from 2019, obviously. Uh, and what's the second question? The second question was... Uh, is there a preview for displaying on a mobile? There is, a, again. Um, I've actually not used this on a mobile because it's, it's, I tend to use the mobile if I want to post live, if I need to do it there and then. Uh, but you can uh, you can look at it on a mobile from... from uh, from previous experience it has been a while since i've used it but I'm pretty sure you can okay that's it so follow on we briefly mentioned maybe potentially writing a brief style guide um, for fellow club members if they have um, access to your account but what i think one of the main things to establish whether you're new setting up your account whether it's established is great to work out the tone of voice for your club this may be something that you've never even considered. It all sounds very serious, very business-like. You're a fun motor club. It is really important to think about how you want to come across to potential new members, potential competitors who might be taking part in your event. I'm guessing most people are going to want to come across as a friendly, approachable club, welcoming, in fact. Um, but this is obviously going to determine the type of content that you upload and share and the style in which it's written. Whatever style you choose needs to be suitable for your club. And it's always, always, always make sure the spelling and grammar is correct before posting. I know Facebook and Instagram do let you edit if you spot any little typos, but once you tweet, that is it. <laughs> We've all done it. <laughs> and I'm proud to admit it. Accidental mistakes do happen. And this, again, with schedule, you can help that, but uh, it does make a difference. And it is nice just to have, uh, you know, a, a brand which is, like you said, Sarah said, representable and uh, reflects your club and your community. Mm. A simple spelling mistake, writing in text speak as if you're chatting to a friend or not using grammar. I've seen social posts where people just think a paragraph is one huge long sentence and um, it can easily ruin a club's image or maybe put someone off coming along. Continuing on this theme, always paragraph to break up your text and improve readability. Most people will access that social media on their phones. You know, they have a quick scroll in between meetings or whatever. Um, and if they can't easily read the first few sentences and they're not interested, they won't bother. So we've actually got an example post here. We're not trying to pick on anybody at all, but we have a post here from our friends at the uh, Asphalt Rally Championship. Um, and well, Ben, could you like to talk us through why this isn't perhaps the perfect social media post? Uh, okay, right. So I, it, it's got some good pits. So first of all, it's got um, it's got the link to the story there, which is good. Um, it's got that grey bar which you can see. So they've up, um, they've obviously put the story on the website uh, and then linked across their social, which is brilliant because it's a call to action. You want people to go and click because you don't want to put the whole press release or the whole story on a social post because people will get bored. It looks clunky. So that's what social media is already designed for. Uh, it probably doesn't help that they've started with that the gaming tag is is that first that first word there. It looks a bit unprofessional. It looks like they've started with a, with a straight off not being able to spell someone's name. So perhaps mm -hmm. I would have it slightly. Um, they could have shortened that, that link. So where it's got asphaltrallying.com, there are ways where you can, because they've, they've pushed that, that gray box you can see underneath the image, that is a click through to the website. So that link is already there. So by, by literally saying the call to action, click below to read more, 
you don't need to have that link there. And it looks really a bit clunky, a bit unprofessional. But if you want to have a link in there, you can use something called bit.ly um, bit and go to bit.ly.com. That's um, a great tool for a shortening a link, which is great for something like Twitter, but also you can track uh, click-through rates for that, which we'll go through in a second. Um, and also it needs a bit of paragraphing as well. Maybe throw an emoji, just, it looks, it's great. It's a great news story, you know, crowning an esports champion, but it just needs a bit, a bit more consideration on the layout. And also I'm not sure what the, the 300 and something words are. Um, I'm not sure why that's thrown in, 300 and something words, but it's not a criticism at all, but it's just something that could be a little bit better perhaps. Perfect. Um, so again, always paragraph and try and keep your text short. Uh, we recommend if you're on Facebook, this is, or Instagram as well, just to have two or three paragraphs followed by a link and a call to action. A call to action can then invite people to read on your website. Uh, them clicking will obviously count as an engagement of your post, so it'll look like it's performing very well if you need to actually show the club chairman or anything. Um, and it's also going to drive traffic to your website. I think um, I'm sure we can maybe go into a websites another day. I know some people make clubs may not have websites or, or and I've certainly said this to, to various different drivers that sometimes they don't have a website. But if you use something like through MailChimp, which I'm sure we'll talk about in another webinar, people some actually times use the that press release that's used on MailChimp as, a, as an anchor link, which again can work in the same way of having that same story in a big format, which you can click away through uh, rather than having all of that text on the social post. Um, got an example here of just breaking up the text as, as Ben mentioned you know people are really going to get put off if they're confronted with a huge wall of text um, whereas here we've broken up the text into simple sentences as a call to action and again don't be afraid to use emojis you may want to you may have decided your tone of voice is pretty business-like but there's no reason you can't throw a, a downward finger a rightward leftward finger in and again we've got an example here from the British Rally Championship just brings it up a bit, makes it a little bit more fun having the trophy emoji in for the standings. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's always a time and a place because obviously when we're announcing some you know serious important announcements, we're not going to put in a, a, in a winky emoji or uh, you know um, you know or a smiling emoji. It's not really uh, applicable. But um, you know when when it's sometimes you know you're doing a Q and A with driver, and that's something we've wanted to try and do and most of UK is to make us more human. You know, we are fans, we love the sport as well, and we want people to love it as much as we all do here. Uh, and I think by having that sort of, you know, less formal tone at times um, can actually really, really help. Um, we're now on to image selection. I think someone maybe mentioned image selection earlier when we were speaking about later. Um, it's well documented that posts with an image, or even better if it's a video, will perform better. So always use a photo if you have one, um, even if it's just a generic shot from a recent club event or even your club logo. Just make sure that it works for the platform. Yeah, absolutely. When, when we've done, for example, a statement, which um, is no one's at fault, but you know, a situation's happened, we try to use a generic image of a circuit or, or you know, sort of waving a flag or you know, lights, you know, pit lane, something like that, just to kind of, at least you've got an image because images, through the algorithms of Facebook, will always be pushing that content more uh, because it sees it as unique content and will come onto a little bit more of that uh, in the future, uh, so in, in this presentation. But um, yeah, so we've just got, here are some of the sizes. Some of you uh, may already know that and you don't need to know them off the top of your, um, your head, but there are, as you can see here, different sizes for the different platforms and using something like Later, you can crop them, uh, but also just to give you a bit of guidance of what works best. As you can see in this image here, again, uh, from South uh, Ham's uh, MC. Uh, it's a great, it's, you know, it's, it'd be a great event, but at the minute I look at that and go, I, I can't tell what it is. When you're scrolling on Twitter, which this looks like it is, yeah, it's on Twitter. Um, uh, you know, a, a tweet lasts, I think, Sarah, I think it's, it's about 18 seconds, I think it is. Something like that, yeah. It's, it's got a life of about 18 seconds. So therefore, if you're scrolling and you haven't got your information and, you, you know, a nice looking post, people will, will sail on by. Um, and when you look at this image, I can see the date, but I can't see what it is, where, you know, uh, a little bit more information, where do I go? Um, which, okay, there's, there's a link to the Facebook page, but they could have a link there. You can put a link in or a bitly link. Um, but I think just image selection as well is always, is always good. Um, we're not saying you need to go invest in huge photography portfolios, but if there's anyone in the club who is a dab hand of photography, a selection of images to help post, you know, whether it be statements, messages, is always, always vital. Uh, 
Someone just sorry, just put seen eighteen seconds for for Twitter. It is slightly longer for Facebook. Facebook really does depend. Um, I personally have done a little bit of looking into this through my various channels over the last sort of six or seven years that I've been working. It depends on the time you post, how well the post is engaged with. Um, uh, yeah, how much Facebook push it as well, um, which can be a bit of a lottery. Uh, it really is, because um, it really depends on how well the, if the post performs well organically, they will naturally push it. And obviously, as you've probably seen, Facebook do have Facebook ads now to, to help you boost it even further. That's obviously what they want you to do is to pay more. But by having good organic con content, that will help with some of the, 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 uh, the Facebook uh, pushing. There is no sort of time. Uh, you know, I would say it is under 24 hours you're probably looking at around 12, 10 to 12 hours at an absolute maximum for a Facebook post for it's time for someone to see it in their feed. So someone like me, who's on it permanently, will see it probably a lot quicker than say someone like, I don't know, for example, Ian Berry, who doesn't use it every day of the week, um, but maybe look on the evenings and he'll flick through, he'll get his time like a later date. So that there is a wave as such. Uh, and I'm probably looking around half a day from what I've, I've seen from our content. Just as an aside, John has mentioned it would be great if clubs had a, access to a database that we could provide of generic photos. So I think that's a great idea. I've got a feeling it's been mentioned a bit before, but I'll bring that up internally and see if we can make that happen. Yeah, we we're actually, funny enough, we're looking at ourselves. This, Ironically, this is the year uh, both Sarah and I, the first proper season we were going to be working together. And we really wanted to, to get out there to your events, uh, to British Championships, to, to other events, and really... For us personally, build up a bit of a, a portfolio of images, which again we could do a nice little selection, uh, and, and you know, to, to clubs. But working with you guys, uh, we you know we would like to build build that to, together. I'm sure Ian, you know, there's there's plans afoot, but um, yeah, slow progress. I think we want to do it internally, then we can look to roll it out in the future. Yes, definitely. Um, and next up, we're looking at content, um, which again, Ben just mentioned the Facebook algorithms. Um, you know, content is king. Good content is the difference between a successful post that will stay around for a day um, on various people's timelines and get shared over and over again and retweeted and a post that's going to flop a little bit, just get a few likes and kind of die a sad death after a few hours. Okay, we've, all, we've all done that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it is really important to tailor your content to each platform. Obviously, um, there's a big difference between word count and character count between Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And as we've just seen, there are obviously different image requirements. So we have an example here of the same post from Motorsport UK shared across Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You can just, oh. Sorry, Sarah, just on that, I know a few people were struggling with the image size. I don't know if, if, if we can do anything with that. If not at all, I'm sure, can we do the presentation afterwards, circulate it just so they can have a... Yeah, that'd be great. I just think a few comments I've seen people were struggling with the, uh, the, the image. Appreciate it. These are, are screenshots obviously taken off Facebook and they're probably reduced quality anyway to begin with. But sorry, Sarah, for interrupting. Just saw a few comments. There. Fine. Yeah, we can. Um, this is being recorded. So we will share a recording of the presentation around um, as well as we can share the slides. So that will all be sent out to you. Um, hopefully some of you can see, um, but there is a different image. Um, for the tweet because the other two images were square and they just simply wouldn't have worked. It might have actually chopped the top of Ollie's head off in these pictures. So um, Ben are pleased with these posts. Um, he's used a car here, a nice landscape shot which works. Um, and there's also subtle text differences based on where people can go to read more, whether that's the link in the bio on Instagram, we've got an actual, we've got the link preview on Facebook and the link to the website on Twitter as well. Yeah, so just, sorry, just on that. So again, on the Facebook, you can see with that gray box underneath, that's, um, that's the link pushing to Facebook. Uh, and then the uh, Twitter, obviously, you can see we've got the Motorsport UK link straight forward. And then on, on Instagram, some of you probably have had, had this trouble. You may already know the solution. Um, obviously, you can't put a link in a normal post. So uh, as Sarah's mentioned there, click a link in the bio, which you can, I think we're going to come on a little bit later. Sorry, I think I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself uh, again. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, just just seeing that there because obviously the click and link in the bio is uh, obviously very important because that is your tool, your call to action. So sorry, Sarah, I know you're going to mention this. It's all else, but <laughs> I'm having a senior moment. Um, so speaking of clicking the link in the bio, that leads us nicely onto our next point. Always include a call to action. 
every post you publish should be pointing visitors to your website, to watch a video, to enter an event, to spectate, to buy tickets, to get involved, whatever it is. We've got a few examples on screen, but you should always, always, always be pointing them somewhere with a call to action. Also, um, we do obviously recommend sharing the content of other motor clubs, well-known drivers, etc. But make sure your feed doesn't become dominated by others' posts. If you want to share the content of others, why not publish a post yourself, linking to their website, all the relevant content or news story, and let's basically make the content your own. The Facebook algorithm itself is weighted towards unique content, so you'll definitely reach more people if you're making the content your own rather than sharing it from an external site or link. For example, if you wanted to upload a video, um, say you had a video from your most recent event that was on YouTube and you wanted to share the YouTube link, if you actually uploaded the video direct to Facebook itself, it would reach a lot more people and receive better engagement, views, everything than just sharing a link to the YouTube video. So that kind of rounds off the end of our overall generic best practice tips. And we're now going to look specifically at Facebook. I know we asked you all a question when you registered um, about which platforms you use as a club. And I believe Facebook was the most popular with all but two people um, saying that they use Facebook. So straight into uh, Ben's going to talk us through a little bit of Facebook here. Okay. Okay. So this seems to be the, the most popular amongst uh, guys tuning in today. Um, so again, we've got, um, let me bring this up. Oh, you can say here we go. Right. So we've, we've mentioned a little bit more about the, the kind of the, the overarching theme, which you kind of can have through scheduling through kind of how you want to make a bit of a content plan, uh, and, and your sort of tone of voice. But we've also spoken a little bit about how a post should look as well. And this is a recent Father's Day one. Again, there's, there's, a, there's a call to action, there's a nice image. Uh, hopefully you can kind of see it a little bit as well. And obviously comparing it to, to the, the previous one. Uh, and it's not, no disrespect to the, to the British uh, Tarmac Championship, the Asphalt Championship at all. But when you look at the two, my eyes certainly, as someone who's looking at these all the time for, for interesting content, I already go, I'm not sure. I don't know what that says. I, I can't read it. I'm going to move on. Uh, Whereas the one on the right-hand side, a little bit clearer, it's got the image, you can see Father's Day a couple of times, you're more likely to know what it's about and more likely to click. You may not want to click and go through it, but you've got a better idea of what that's actually going to do. So we've touched a little bit more about the, the, um, the composition of it. And I think I mentioned Bitly as well. So it was on the previous slide, which I think will come into Twitter, but it's very useful. Uh, Bitly.com, if you need to shorten your link, if you want to have a link in there, rather than like a really long clustered sort of URL, by having your Bitly link, uh, if you take that link and put a plus sign at the end, you can actually see how many people um, have actually gone and clicked that link. So you can actually see tangible results. So if you need to, to say, well, how many people have actually clicked to go and register an event or gone to the website or gone for to your call of action, you can actually go and see it. And it's very useful. So if you have a bit.ly.com account, it's for, again, free to, to have. Um, so just seen a question, bit.ly actually doesn't cost anything. Um, you get a certain amount of, so for example, if I have motorsportuk.org forward slash uh, Ben Bunnell joins the communications team as my web story, and I shorten that as a bit.ly link, I can only probably do that a certain amount of times. Again, most UK have, have got like the first tier up, but with a free account you do have, I can't remember how many times it is a, a week or a month, but you know, if your club activity isn't you know, posting seven, eight times a day and you're only doing maybe one a day, I think it'd be, it'd be perfect. And again, you can actually see, by putting the plus in, you can see how many people have actually gone on to that link. So yeah, that was just, sorry, just to, just to bring that up for us, I remembered it. Um, so there we go, that's what we think, how it should look, making it look attractive uh, and going into the, the creator studio. Um, so if you don't want to perhaps use later, um, you may, may have noticed Facebook has changed slightly from in the last six or months, so months been rolling out uh, and the creator studio here uh, is where you can go and schedule stuff. There. You used to be able to schedule in situ on your post, but now the creator studio opens up that possibility and more, which we're going to have a look at now. So again, when you look in, it looks kind of similarish to, it's almost like the reverse of, um, almost the, re the, the reverse of what we saw on later. So this is our timeline for Mesut UK, literally from this morning. Um, so it tells you what has gone out on your channel. So the, the, mo the thing at the top there, don't know if you guys can quite see, but it's George Russell testing a cart again. So Formula One driver back out again, which we shared that post. 
uh, and then the rest is, is, uh, is all published again in Coronal Scrolls. So you can see what's gone out and across the tabs at the top, you can see what's been published, what you're going to schedule, drafts uh, and what's expiring. For example, if you've got any adverts or any posts like that, um, which again, very useful tool. This is free in Facebook. Uh, there's a lot of, you can do uh, Facebook ads through here, but also you can do some scheduling and also some, <clears throat> some excuse me, some cross posting, which will come on to you second, which is hopefully, <coughs> excuse me, some of you guys may have already done this, but it's quite a nice little tool. Once you've set up, um, can help grow your account and get some really good content onto your feeds as well. So hopefully. We've got a question. Uh, from Kate Neal says, we often post numerous times on the day of one of our events with updates. Would Bitly work in that type of environment? It, if you've got someone anchored to a, to it, like I do, unfortunately, at most events, the glamour, everyone thinks that I go and travel the British Isles and uh, go and see great places. I'm normally anchored in front of my PC here. And I'm, I'm very, I'm quick and easy to go and do that. Uh, but also... Once you've made a bit.ly link, so you know, when we spoke about before about the mostwhatuk.org, Ben Bunel joins British Cup, whatever the, 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 the title is, once your bit.ly link's made, that bit.ly link will never expire. So you can keep posting that. So you can put that in your notes in your phone. So if there's a simple call to ac action for tickets, for example, all the time, or entries, you literally copy and paste that out of your notes, bang, there it goes. And that link is exactly the same every time, unless you change it, of course. Hopefully that's answered that. So uh, cross posting. Uh, I don't know. Can we can we do a raise of hands? Uh, is this is this a time we can do it? Has anyone raise your hands if you've heard of cross posting and or used cross posting? Ooh. A few. A few. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So, cross posting effectively is a great video tool, uh, which we we're talking about Facebook algorithms and pushing content because. We want your timeline to look really nice and you to have a lot of unique content. So we've actually done this quite well and quite successfully. In fact, we ran the latest version last night on the British Rally Championship page. You may have seen it on the Motorsport UK page and actually a lot of pages. So we've been running an eSports series. Uh, and to help the reach of this, uh, we've used cross-posting. So the British Rally Championship page is, is big, but it's not massive. Uh, and by using some friends and allies, we can make that post grow all of a sudden by literally... Uh, setting up a relationship and ticking. So we used M Sport, uh, we used Dirtfish, which is an online media publication, um, Motorsport UK, World's Rally GB, the teams and the drivers. So they will get this video, which British Rally Championship puts out, they will also get it on their feed at the same time or, or whenever they want, because you can either do it as live or you can do it uh, in the future. But it also, when they make a post, it will look like it's their own content rather than a clunky share system, which looks a bit, doesn't look quite right. It doesn't, looks a bit messy. But with this, it looks very clean but also they, the stats go back to the original source. So the British Rally Championship page, I can't remember what the latest round is because I haven't done it, but the Spanish round, which was round two, we've had about 140,000 views for two videos, which normally we probably may have got maybe 30,000 views. So by doing a bit of cross-posting, it helps grow. So for example, if you're a venue that's got a, a British championship that comes knocking along, um, or you've got a, a series that goes around the country or, you know, famous driver, you, you have an interview, for example, I just interviewed Kelvin Fletcher. Um, so if he came along and did a video and you could cross post onto, onto his page, other things like that, it helps, helps the growth. Um, I think we've got an example of how it briefly works. I think if there's any more questions, yeah. we can go into it another time. Um, so when you upload a video, again, probably some of you may not see this, but you'll be able to replay this and see the notes. But when you upload a video, it'll look fairly self-explanatory. You put your title in what you want to write, let it upload, check your, um, your thumbnail. But when you go on, so that's on the first section of the create post. When you go to publishing options, you can either set it as a premiere. So uh, what we've done on, again on the British Rally Championship, Wales Rally GB, and even most of what you can is set some premiere videos where people can set up watch parties and, and join in at a certain time to watch content. So you may host a rally, for example, uh, and you've delved into the archives and someone has digitalized some VHS copies of a 1983 uh, event, you know, event at Pembrey, for example, that could be a great watch for your club members and help, you know, people love to see the cars of that day competing. So through this, you can set up a premiere, make it a bit of an occasion, uh, or you can schedule it in the future. But if you scroll down to the bottom, which is the third one, that's where you can see all the relationships we've set up uh, with, with Motorsport UK for cross-posting. But if you want a bit of help in that, uh, I'm sure we can do a bit of question answers. You know, those who want to know a bit more can stay at the end, or we can do a little something more in the future. But it's, it's a, just a, a great way to just to help content grow and, and make everyone work closer together. 
And we've got a question it says for, from Will Cox. It says, uh, our club have both a Facebook page and a group. At the moment, I have to post in both manually. I post in the group using the page, which is an admin for the group. Can you cross post a page post into a group automatically? Not into a page. Um, you would unfortunately still have to take a link or you'd have to do the share function into a page. Unfortunately, unfortunately that function is only available currently with Facebook on pages. They have trials looking into groups, but it's just pages currently, I'm afraid. Okay, let's move on to Twitter then. So we mentioned earlier, ah, 18 minutes, not 18 seconds, Ben. <laughs> we were close, almost. 18 minutes, of course, sorry, 18 seconds. <sighs> I mean, you said you said rally really people on time. <laughs> uh, here, I was never a very good co-driver. You can ask the drivers I've sat with. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. Eighteen minutes. I just think I just get eighteen seconds of fame. That's what I do. But sorry, Sarah. <laughs> right. Um, so it's important to remember that the average shelf life of a tweet is eighteen minutes. Sounds there we go. Now compared to the first version. <laughs> But right, there are 7,000 new tweets sent every single second. So the shelf life of one tweet is four times shorter, um, at least, than anything you post on Facebook. So that obviously makes any of your messaging and content a lot harder to stick. Hashtags will obviously help your tweets to reach more people and also help you reach out to those with similar interests. They can literally be as simple as hashtag photosport, hashtag trial, for example. But having said that, it is always advisable to search for a hashtag before using it. Sometimes you can end up innocently tagging your tweet in something highly inappropriate. There was a British championship a few years ago that used a certain hashtag on their tweets, not realizing that they were actually linking to some very inappropriate adult websites um, and their content was turning up in some feeds that they really didn't want it to be in. Um, we have an example here of another post. Again, this is linked to retweeting, um, but these guys have, of course, used some hashtags and tagged at our Motorsport UK. So we have retweeted their content. Um, please do, everybody, tag us if you're up to anything. We'd love to see your content. We can't be everywhere, um, but we'd love to share any interesting content that we're tagged in. Um, we are at our Motorsport UK across all platforms. Um, you can also tag us using the hashtag our Motorsport UK. Um, so we've just mentioned retweeting. Retweets um, and interactions are something that Twitter is great for. Um, it's a great way and probably the best platform for actually reaching out to people, reaching whether that's fellow clubs, drivers, venues, organisations. Um, so definitely make use of that tool. Another feature um, which is unique to Twitter and great fun are polls. Has anybody here used the Twitter poll? Can we have a raise of hands? Another Mexican wave going. <laughs> okay, a few, a few of you, not a huge amount. I suppose a little bit specialist. Um, but they're a great way to actually engage with your followers. Um, why not ask them ahead of an event? Just a simple question about what they're looking forward to, who they think might win, or just a simple question in relation to some recent motorsport news, or what video they'd like to see this weekend if you're sharing all content. Just has to be simple, but it's a great way of actually engaging. Another quick thing to mention on Twitter, um, try to avoid it if you can, but if you start a tweet um, with, with, a, with a mention, so at Ben Vunel, for example, if I wanted to tweet Ben, um, unless I put a full stop at the very start of the tweet, Twitter is going to count that tweet as a reply to Ben, um, and it would therefore not show up on my feed or in other people's feeds. Um, so yeah, if we actually wanted to say Ben Bunel is hosting a quiz tonight, join in, it may be easier to rephrase the sentence or just make sure you can put a full stop in at the start. So it's full stop at Ben Bunel is hosting a quiz tonight. To make surely, sure was, surely Sarah, you'd start with the great Ben Bunel would <laughs> be an easier way to do it. <laughs> Sarah, Kate Neal has asked why the capitalization for each new word? Um, it's just a clarity thing, um, so that if people are looking at your hashtag for the first time and they've never seen it before, 
I'm guilty of it. I'm sure everybody is. You see something trending on Twitter as a hashtag and it's, it's all lowercase and you're thinking, what does that say? And I think there was, um, it was something went viral a few years ago where I can't remember her name, but there was a singer releasing an album and they hadn't capitalized each hashtag and her name and the album um, all actually made something very rude and it became a running joke across social media. So it's always good just to clarify what your hashtag is um, just by capitalizing each uh, word so that people can always read it and know what's going on rather than having to sit trying to guess what you're trying to say. <laughs> it's a, it's okay. just a nice, nice branding as well. It just makes it like Sarah said, nice clarity. Kate said that makes sense. So all good. Okay. Excellent. Um, moving now on to Instagram which I think, I think again, was fairly popular amongst um, our registrars when we asked you the uh, questions at the start. So, Ben, would you like to uh, start on Instagram? Oh, we'll, we'll give it a go. Yeah, absolutely. So Instagram, I know a few, a few, um, a few of you said that you've, you've got it in your portfolio that you use in your clubs. You may have it personally as well. Um, yeah, this I think definitely is the more the, the social of the socials. Um, it's very image led. Um, and also it's the one where you can have a little bit more fun, be a bit more relaxed on your tone of voice because it doesn't have to be as corporate because there are two elements, <clears throat> excuse me, to Instagram, which we'll see in a second. Um, you've got your, your posts, which are very similar to Facebook and Twitter, but also your Instagram stories, which are a bit more fun, can be a bit more tongue in cheek and don't last as long as well. But they actually can help when you're, you're live reporting from an event or you've got a big occasion where you actually want to have a bit more of a, a, a live kind of in the moment feel. Um, so images are really important. Again, getting them right for Instagram because it is that 1080p by 1080p is very important. You want your images to look right. And that's where like later. And also if you, if you, if you are, if you have got the capability to have any sort of photo editing, that is great. But there are some free apps out there that can actually um, do some great things, can, can help measure it for you, makes it a tile effect. There's all sorts. And there, there are plenty of them out there that are free as well. Um, make them nice and bright uh, because it is so limited. Obviously, images, sorry, words alone don't work and obviously a good image speaks a thousand words for you. Um, and hopefully by, hopefully you can see that the pictures here, some, <coughs> oh, excuse me, what's wrong with me today? Uh, so, some nice, uh, some nice colourful images, smiling, happy people, uh, enjoying, enjoying their motorsport. Um, what else have we got on my notes? Um, yeah, and again, there's filters on the phone. Those who have used Instagram can actually tweak and mini manipulate i think not uh too much the image but actually just enhance it slightly just to get a better bit of cl clarity uh, for example the the ambulance photo bottom left i don't know if you can see that that's been tweaked slightly just to bring the colors up a bit more that's a nice story real hard kind of uh image that just stands out um we have a question ben before we go any further. yeah of course while we're on the posts will cox has said how do you put the tags locations and other captions on instagram rather than just typing a caption like on Snapchat. I'm not sure whether he means in stories or in posts there, um, but it's, well, if you're posting, um, when you come to write your caption right before you post your image at the end, just underneath the box where you write the caption, um, there's the option to add location. Again, just tap that and you can search for where you are or your phone may pick it up automatically. Um, and then you can, um, there's also the option to tag or will then take you into the photo and you can press people's faces or locations wherever and tag those accounts. Um, we'll come to stories in a moment, I think, um, or we may cover it in there. That's literally, I was, I was about to say stories, but yeah. Um, yeah, uh, so where were we? So yeah, um, obviously the image is very, very important because it helps sell the, the championship or the, the club or whatever you, you look after. Um, so yeah, think about the colour, think about your theme. Some people do a nice black and white kind of uh, theme. Some people, not. it's all about vibrant colours and try not to get two things that clash and always try and use a little bit of an if, a dim image differentiation compared to other channels. Just makes it look again, like, you know, unique content and you know what you're doing at times. Um, so Instagram, I think that's kind of the posting faction. We mentioned, obviously, when you've got uh, your description, you can put link to bio. And as you, I don't know, do we have that image? I've got it on this screen, but you can have it at the top. You can have your your link bio and that can go back to that um so we've got two stories now haven't we yes sarah you 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 went to rome to take this photo stories 
Tell us. I did. I read all the race of Valley Lunga. <laughs> Just to take that photo. <laughs> Um, stories are a brilliant way for your club to share updates live from an event, um, give people an insight into what you do, and maybe offer a behind the scenes little glimpse. Um, for example, if you've got some trusted volunteers, and I stress trusted here, yeah, <laughs> um, why not give them access to your Instagram story for the day, let them show what it's like to actually marshal an event, go behind the scenes, and maybe encourage some others to have a go and break down sometimes the, the walls and the perceptions that people think motorsport comes with. So we've got an example here from um, one of Motorsport UK's Instagram stories from last year's motorsport games um, in Italy. Um, so I don't know if anyone here has used Instagram stories much, um, but they're super simple to create. Um, and it's really nice because it's live original content. It doesn't tend to be super edited. It's almost raw in that sense that you could literally just point and shoot and uh, pick up some action from an event. So um, I'm sure you're all familiar with the Instagram app. Stories appear um, at the very top of the, um, the app homepage. Um, so to add your own story, you would simply click, I don't know if some of you are going to see the image here, um, but your story option is on the far left. Um, and the rest of the posts here are just people that we follow who have added stories. Um, so if you've never watched one before and always wondered what those pink and orange rings were, <laughs> that just means that someone has uploaded a story. And that is, of course, where your own story would appear um, if you were, well, for people that follow you. Um, the, sorry. sorry. And we, have, we haven't got a screenshot of it here, but, Will, we did want to add things to our story. Once we've, um, we've taken our photo that we want to upload to the story, in that option, you'll find there are four buttons in the top right hand corner of the screen. From there, um, you'll be able to obviously, there's a text option. If you just have a play around with those, um, there's an option there to add extra things. And that's where you can add the temperature, the time, your location, you can tag people, you can add gifts, you can add stickers, you can add all kinds of things that nobody really needs. But <laughs> a bit of fun. <laughs> Absolutely. They're, they're, um, they're 15 seconds. They're really bite size. Um, so they can be images. Uh, you can, you can go live as well. Um, you can have an Instagram live. So literally if you're, and I think coming up, obviously there's, there's a time and a place, obviously most of what we you know will resume. Uh, but this is a time where we've got to try and be clever as social media people to try and we've got to try and bring some insights to some of these events that sadly are going to just be, uh, you know, a closer spectators. So this is where we've got to do a bit, a bit more clever, with some of our content behind the scenes, whether some officials, you know, in a bit of downtime, they can do a little bit of behind the scenes. This is the stuff that people like to see. They always like to see, um, they always like to see a bit of behind the scenes. You know, when I working on World's Rally GB, always the best posts when the cars arrived into the service park when no one was actually allowed into it. You know, that was the, the when posts would go viral. It's something that people can't see and the people like getting the, the kind of inside track. Definitely. Um, it's also worth mentioning as well, that unless you save them as a highlight, a story will only last for 24 hours. Um, so we've got an example here of some lovely stories that Ben's done on the British Rally Championship Instagram page. So these are all saved as highlights. Um, so it's great. So the example here is obviously for each round, you've got a nice little summary that you can look back at that was live and recorded in the moment on the event. Um, so if we wanted, we could go back and relive the, the Ulster Rally from last year. Um, and actually get live, the live footage, I suppose, as it was happening, and you can kind of follow the story of the event. And when competitors or, yeah, competitors, they can tag you as a club or you as an event or, or, or whatever, and you can share their content as well. So you can build up not just only your content, but you get, then all of a sudden, you get everyone else's as well, and you can put onto your timeline to build the story. Perfect. Uh, uh, there's a question from Laura, <coughs> which, and I, oh, it's bouncing around, I'll read it to you. So, is there, any, is there any reason why Motorsport UK don't follow many of us clubs on Instagram? It would help us massively to gain followers and members and showcase all levels of motorsport, as I notice there is not much grassroots content on Motorsport UK's social media currently. This does not reflect the majority of events. Which makes a very good point there for me. Makes a very good point. Uh, and I'm going to give you, we've, we're, we're very honest and open. Um, there is one of me. 
Uh, and I am the person that's supposed to look after social media and a lot of other things at Motorsport UK. And unfortunately, I haven't had the time to fully go through, look at all the 700, uh, 750 clubs, 770 clubs, I think. 720. 720, 720 clubs uh, across the country. Uh, again, we certainly can't, I haven't got the, the ability to, to know who's on or what. So yeah, there needs to, we are looking hopefully at someone who can come in, can really move social media on again for us. And yeah, because we can't be everywhere and this content is great. And I think we are slowly but surely, again, now that I've got my feet a little bit under the table at Most UK the last year or so, I can understand how it works. So we are going to try and do more from British level, first of all, and filter down and, and get the content. Because obviously these are the stories that matter, how to get into the sport, what you guys are doing. Uh, so again, I've, I think there's going to be another media module coming, I think, Sarah, but it all helps with communications to us. You know, we are, I suppose, at most what UK, we are at the top of this iceberg. We can't get everywhere. And this is where the clubs are, is the network. And that's that will something I'm sure we can talk yeah. about another module. But hopefully that's an honest answer to that question. On that uh, subject as well, I know in the past we spoke briefly about photographs and clubs having a bank of photographs. But I know from the older days, I suppose, we've never really had a bank of um, photographs from grassroots events. And as Ben said, we were really hoping to go out this year get out to the autocross, the car trials, and all these different kinds of events. Um, but sometimes we just don't have the photographs or the resources. So we'd love it if clubs, you know, feel free to share images from your events with us. And of course we will use them and we'll promote the, um, the disciplines and um, your events and, you know, the real grass club stuff, because that is obviously what 80% of the sport is. Um, I'm uh, Laura. Just to to follow this up, um, I've opened up, in my infinite wisdom, another another word document, and I'm putting some of these really good ideas into that, and then I'll feed that back to our new uh, head of communication and marketing, which is Tracy Novak, which is is great for us to have her on board as of about three weeks ago. So stuff like that, I'll feed back, and the same as with Sarah said, I've written that down. I wonder if there's a way we can produce some sort of uh, a, certain, a different web address, a, um, a different email address rather, and people can you know, put a, a, a thing out to all the clubs saying, please send us some photos. So again, I've put that idea into this, this Word document to feedback. We've got a, full, a couple more questions, guys, uh, from Michael Broadbent. Can I take temperature checks, thumbs up, down, for example, during the event to uh, obtain real-time feedback? Um, I'm, is, I'm imagining this is on Instagram stories, um, the context of this. You can, um, if you were doing a story, one of the options you can add to a story is that there's a slider um, when you can add your own emoji. So if you wanted, you could add the thumbs up emoji or maybe a fist or something and then let people slide it up or down to kind of get a rough policy. Sorry. Yeah, but it, there are a couple of things like that for like sentiment if analysis. That's kind of what you're looking for, um, where you can literally say, what do you think of this? You know, 10 out of 10 over here, or like Sarah said, uh, gives you a bit of a sliding scale for, for that, if that's what that question was. Okay, Will Cox, uh, be good if Motorsport UK follow on Facebook. Again, I've made a note of that. Great idea. Andrew Bisping says, what can you recommend about the art of timing for best engagement and does it vary between platforms? Are you days of the week, time of the day, normal times and exceptional ones like now? Uh, sh shall I answer? I I've got, uh, with, with my years of experience doing that, um, I, I always ask the question because pe people think, oh, you only do social media as a job. Okay, I don't just do that. But um, I always throw it back and go, okay, actually you're, you're accessing it. You go in your lunchtime, you go in, in the morning, whenever. We always find you'll see some of our bigger announcements, unless it's something which is we think is going to be quite important. Big, we get out a very early time during the day. But some are sort of, you know, when we announce like a calendar. Uh, we've just we're about to do what we've actually just sorry done on the British Kart Championship, which goes in the evening. Evening so much better. Your prime time when your audience are on is seven till nine for Facebook. Uh, that's when people are uh, they've they've had a bit of dinner. They maybe you know, the, the kids are playing or they're about to go to bed, and that's when they're kind of flicking through and catching up on the day's proceedings. Um, Twitter tends to be normally a morning thing. People do scroll in the morning if they're traveling to work, they're on a bus or on a tube, whatever it is, um, and they get to work, have a quick flick through. And again, just before they go to bed, slightly later, so they're kind of bookending, but you can't go wrong with the evening slot for, for news. 
that's when the, the, the prime time is. But again, in analytics, um, if you really want to get very excited, <laughs> excited by it all, you can actually go into insights and actually have a look at uh, when your audience is actually online the most. So you can actually tailor it to, to what your channel is. But we found through our data, uh, it is that seven till nine. Mm. Um, John Bolton sent in saying, uh, happy for any photos to be used from, he sent me a link, so I've made a note of that. John says, perhaps we should all share our club profiles on here before we leave so you guys can follow them. I'm not entirely sure if that's a good idea because it might, might swallow up the Zoom chat box. What do you guys think? Or do we get everybody to send it in as part of the questionnaire that we send out after the event? We... Yeah, I, I think that's yeah. probably the, the, the best thing. Um, and again, we're, we're quite, it's something which when I came to Motorsport UK, I really want, wanted to push the, the disciplines that may not necessarily get the line right. And also the, the guys, uh, you know, putting in the really good effort, you know, the, how to get involved in the sport, because this is what we want to try and get more people into. Um, mm. And again, it's something which I'm hoping they will find a new me, a younger me, because yeah, I'm not getting younger, but I'm not, I'm not old either, but we somebody in who's maybe 10 years younger who can move social. Ian's looking at me with a massive frown. But we're hoping, <laughs> get someone in who's maybe sort of, you know, in their early 20s who can move social media that extra step on. And I can then look at focusing about how we can communicate with Sarah as well, who's coming back to the comms team. And we can then engage with you guys a bit more and pick out those stories, because again, you're the you know, the guys and girls on the ground that can help us. Okay, I've made, I've made an executive decision. I'm going to make sure that when we send out the questionnaire after, we will ask people to give us their club profiles. I think that's the way forward. I've made a note of that. There we go, decision made. Uh, I think we actually weren't too far away from, yeah, because we were talking about stories, again, video and pictures, and you can get other people to participate, you know, your officials, you know, your, your, the public uh, competitors, obviously the public when they can get back into, into motorsport. But this is a good time, as we said before, to look behind the scenes stuff is perhaps a good way to, to keep those people informed. Yeah, it's a great way, you know, even if you think nothing's happening, if, you know, if you're having a Zoom meeting or something, even if it's just a little post of you guys having a Zoom meeting or a little bit of paperwork or something, just to show what you're doing and maybe what goes into an event behind the scenes from an organizer's perspective. You know, so I think some people, spectators and competitors, never really understand the full extent and organising that actually goes into larger events and even some club motorsport events. Um, so, you know, there's always something to share. It may not be interesting to you because you do it once a month, but um, there'll be people out there that will be interested. Um, and then I think just to finalise Instagram, uh, Ben mentioned it briefly um, about the whole link in bio, but yeah. Um, Deva put a link in your caption because the only way that people um, will be able to get to that link is if they copy and paste it into their internet browser. You'd have to really, really want to look at that link to do that, um, to stop scrolling through. Um, and again, um, link in bio, you can change it as much as you like. As you can see, it's just under your bio. Um, so you can edit that by clicking the three little dots next to that on your page. Um, you can update it as much as you like if you really want to. You could change it for each post, but it's much better to just have it linking to your home page, your news page, or maybe your events page, if that's what you're going to be talking about. Um, and you can, of course, put links in your stories too. And that's it. Um, any more questions from anybody? That's hopefully given because again, we didn't want to go, we wanted to try and go down the middle. We appreciate some people finding their feet with social media and some people are fairly, you know, fairly accomplished and have got some really good, good platforms. So hopefully it's got a few little tips there for those who are really keen and also a lot to maybe to progress with um, in the future. But again, any questions, we're, we're here, to, here to be grilled. Okay, so uh, Karen has said thank you very much. It's all very interesting, thank you. Um, any questions, if you want to stick them in the webinar chat box and the guys will try and answer that. Um, I Just from our end, we've, this is the first time we've done this like this. We've done, other, done some, some other webinars, but somebody else was sort of hosting them on our platform. So there are some lessons to come from this for us. It's a brave new world, but I'm convinced that webinars 
um, and, and meetings via Zoom on the way forward for, from an engagement perspective with clubs and, and competitors. So I thank you for your patience if you have struggled with some of the, 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 uh, the screen shots, etc. So I've taken that away and we'll, we'll make sure we do a better job on that front next time. Um, a couple of questions come in uh, from John Hector. We only use a closed Facebook group page. Any advice on disclaimer fair use policy? or how to deal with the bad comments? Um, on that, there is a way in a Facebook group, um, I think there's a setting, um, I've written a guide on this, I'm trying to remember it. There is a setting so that you can um, do it so that certain people maybe can't comment or their comments have to be approved, or there are settings you can put on so that people just can't comment, um, which is probably the best thing to do. But on Facebook groups as well, um, we'll be sending you an email tomorrow with a link to some suggested topics that we've come up with for webinars. You can, of course, suggest more, but I know Facebook groups was one of them. Um, so there are other topics such as Facebook advertising, Facebook groups. So if there is anything, um, start to have a think if there's anything else you'd like us to do a webinar on. And, and we can, of course, try and put something together for you. <laughs> Yeah, Sarah's, sorry, just on that point, Sarah's absolutely right. And you can um, put some blocks and filters on. So if any particular swear words, we have those set up on. Because, um, we, you know, we do, as most of the UK, we get all sorts of opinions and on the British Friday Championship, all other pages, uh, and people are entitled to them. But, you know, we don't tolerate swearing because we've got people who are, you know, eight-year-old carters who watch that page. You know, it's not right. So we do have filters on. You can put those in. You can adjust them to how sensitive you want them as well and also block people who are, Persistent nuisances. Um, Kate says, thanks. Girl, very good. She's going to go and grill her 20-year-old daughter on Instagram. Uh, Will Cox says, are we doing any webinars on websites? The answer to that is yes. Uh, we haven't scheduled it in yet. The next one is on using MailChimp. Uh, which oh, is next, next one is, next Wednesday is marketing. Club so, marketing with yeah. um, Tom Baker, who's very kindly joining as a guest host tom runs northampton based motorsport marketing agency talk um and he's coming on so that's expert advice from um someone who's actually uh, out there uh, maybe more so than ben and i sometimes <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and he's been actually tuning in today to see how it's uh how it's been done as well so hopefully he's had a good idea of what's happened here so it won't be a repetition we'll be moving on for a more marketing point of view in that one Okay, Simon yeah. Phillips says, for Facebook, do you recommend having a page and a group or just one? And if so, which one? Uh, I don't think there's, there is a, there's no wrong or right answer with this one. I think um, a group is always good um, uh, for certain aspects, probably to keep probably people who need to know know. Um, if you have a closed group and a page is very much going out to a public. Um, so actually, there is no wrong or right answer. I think if you want to get a bit more public a, a page allows you to do a lot more um, and allows you to, to sort of open out a bit more a group can be a little bit close shop uh, at times and can be a bit off-putting people may want to join so that's just my thoughts on that Sarah I don't know if you've got anything else um, I'd say a, a group is great for sharing community you know if you've got in jokes you want to talk about club nights you want to share photos and memories you want to say this event's going on who's up for marshalling or just things like that. It is great for building the community in the club and things like that. Um, but as Ben said, if you want to promote yourself as a club, you want to, you know, attract new members, there's nothing worse than that. You know, there are certain clubs and championships out there where you click on them. Uh, yeah, there's Motorsport UK to try and promote what they're doing or something. And you find it's a closed group and you have to be approved to enter or something. And it really does kind of shut people off. If you're a prospective member, you might think, oh, whereas if you've got a nice page and, you know, you're sharing images and, stories from recent events and videos um it's a great way for people to see that you're being open and friendly okay wayne scott says any tips for rolling out paid ad campaigns via social perhaps another top topic for future webinar i 100 percent think so i think there's there's so much you can cover on this and how to do it so i think a question on there and if, if you're doing a bit of it great i think it needs another another full session Okay, right, I've stuck that in my notes as a, as a, as a topic for future. Uh, here we go. Right, here's a quite a long one from John. Thanks, John. Right, I'll have to read this out. It says, I think the main reason I would 
the main question I would ask is probably not for, from a technical standpoint, but perhaps you could do a release to all clubs about just how important this topic is. I'm struggling to get across the importance of social media to some committee members within my club. Uh, I would like to see some comms, maybe via revolution, email, <laughs> carrier pigeon, about how clubs really need to get on board with this in order to attract new members. I don't think some are aware. Um, yeah, good point. Maybe we can do something in revolution. Maybe that's not the medium. We'll have a think about it. I'll make a note. Uh, lots of, now he says, sorry for the long question. <laughs> the answer is so. yes, John. So there you go. Um, right, here's one from Craig Webster. Is it better for club or event Twitter to follow lots of other feeds or just a few? Uh, ooh, evening, Craig. Great to, to hear that, that name again. Um, personally, I think when you're, when you're especially if you're, especially a new account, I would, I would follow more people, especially with uh, similar uh, associated events or drivers that do your series and engage with them as well. Uh, Twitter is, is a little bit more easier to engage with simply because um, if you tag most what you can and it's a nice bit of content and we, of course we'll, you know, when myself, Sarah, or hopefully send up a new person comes in, you can properly manage this. Um, we'll be able to give that a retweet, give that a comment and engage. Uh, I think that would be, uh, pr yeah, I, I would personally, if you're starting out, I would, I would follow a lot the, the right people. Uh, a good amount of the right people. Again, there's no scientific answer numbers. I think it's just the right the right quantity of, of a good quantity. Um, John again. He says uh, the details for the marketing website is on the mark is on Motorsport UK website. The answer is yes. I'm it just going to post them in the chat box as well so that everybody has them. Okay, so you go to clubs resource webinars resource and it's on there isn't it it's a separate tab for webinars and it's yeah, on there. they are in the club resource center um we'll also send you a follow-up email tomorrow with a copy of this webinar the slides the questionnaire for future topics um there'll also be a link in there to the marketing one and i've also just popped it in the chat box where it is on the screen i think <laughs> will cox says yeah. uh any tips for creating hashtags are they worth it on facebook i have no idea whether you have a hashtag feed on facebook the answer is, uh, yeah, I think it is worth it because, again, it's unity. When you go across your three, chat, you know, the three major platforms, um, if you're looking the same across, it just helps. Um, if you do, if you put a hashtag into the search bar at Facebook, it does come up with other people mentioning it. Um, but always do a little bit of searching as well um, because, as Sarah's mentioned, there's been championships. I know working with drivers, they've wanted to use certain ones and um, maybe a hashtag they wanted leads to some sort of other relevance, which is not something they want to have with their brand. So, um, yeah, I just do a bit of digging um, and I think it, it is worth it. Again, I think it just makes a little bit of, bit of unity and, and also just ends the, the post as a nice sort of clarity for your brand. Can I ask a question? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Why isn't Ben branded? He is. That's nice. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm, so, I'm just so sure. Did you not hear I said our CEO and esteemed leader wears this shirt better than I do? I will get my coat. Bye. Bye. <laughs> um, I know John's question earlier was talking about communication and, um, you know, getting the story out to clubs that, you know, social media should be taken seriously. I was just wondering, we launched a club newsletter two months ago. There's only been two issues so far, but I just wondered if people could put their hands up, whether it's actually reaching the right people. Has anybody here actually received our new club newsletter? And if not, I'm sure we can add you on to it if you're interested. Yeah, this is something that I'm keen to push is that the, we have a database that is that the comms use, which is supplied by Simon Fowler with regard to permits. Five hands went up and we've still got 42 participants. So there's a yeah. lot of people not getting it. Uh, and it's a bit of a bugbear for me that, you know, everybody involved in clubs who has a vested interest should be getting that newsletter. Um, so... It's another thing I think maybe we can put it on the questionnaire and say, can you please add your email address here if you want to uh, do the club newsletter, get the cues now. Get, sorry. Receive yeah, definitely. We, we can add people in. Um, okay. Fine. If, if they'd like to receive it, of course. Yeah, we'll put an opt-in on there because you kind of have to for the data issue. So we'll put an opt-in on there and uh, then hopefully you'll start getting that. Yep. Okay. Well, uh, 
Oh, Dan's already said, please add me to the list. <laughs> He's keen. Keen. <laughs> it seems like we've dried up with questions. Um, so I'll just say thank you for you guys, to you guys. Thanks for doing this. And no, thank, thank you very much to everybody who's participated and given up their, their evening. Uh, I've been on quite a few association meetings, other meetings in the evenings, and, and the amount of effort that the clubs, the grassroots clubs I'm talking about here, are putting in to get most sport restarted is just in, so impressive. The passion out yeah. there getting us all back up and running um, and, and getting us going again has been brilliant. So I thank you all very much for your effort and for your time this evening. I'll hand over to these guys. Yeah, as, uh, echoing what Ian said, again, thank you everyone for putting up with us too. You probably hoped that uh, you got rid of us after the quizzes, um, but no, appreciate everyone for tuning in. Again, I think Sarah said we've got a marketing one coming up very soon, next one, and then we've got MailChimp, and I think we could do a bit about press and PR, I think, in the future. That's another thing we can touch on, which um, I'm sure would be quite good, and also a little bit of uh, more social. I think someone mentioned about Facebook advertising and monetization, so I think, yeah, that's, that's good, but... Um, yeah, just really appreciate everyone tuning in and hopefully keep it keep safe, everyone, and we'll see you all very soon, hopefully in the flesh. Yeah, definitely. I know a lot of the topics you've mentioned in the chat tonight are on our list of um, potential options for webinars, so it's nice to see that um, hopefully they'd be well received. And please do um, fill out the questionnaire. We're coming into your inbox tomorrow just to let us know what you'd like to see and also recommend topics that you think we should be covering. And thank you for all for turning up. There we go. You can um, class dismissed, I think is what they say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, guys.